Thank you for having me, Diana. It is indeed a pleasure to be here with you, ladies. I'm not too sure if we have gentlemen um, tuned in, but welcome to everyone. Thank you. It's an honor, actually. Um, I remember when I was invited initially to be a part of Women You Are Strong, I sat looking at the title of the conference and I was like, this is so amazing. Because when the year was just starting, I said, you know, I really need to be more involved in, um, in women empowerment. Now, it's something that I actually live, but in terms of actually doing the events themselves, um, I have not been able to um, do much women empowerment events. So indeed, a pleasure. Um, somebody just typed in the chat room. Are you still hearing feedback? Just let me know. But I'm going to jump right in because I have um, something excited lined up for you guys. So already you guys have been given like a plate full. Um, Rochelle gave such a wonderful presentation about our mental health, ensuring that we have the right emotions going. If they are not so good, you know how to identify and work on them. Diana this morning did an excellent presentation on our financial well-being, being financially strong. I was so grateful that she shared her personal experience and how she had to um, save to go to school and so on and so forth. And of course, oh my word, uh, Mrs. Auntie Joy, I'm going to call you Auntie Joy like Diana. <laughs> um, the presentation a while ago regarding um, just rising from the ashes, just as a phoenix, that was so inspiring. So much information. And ladies, I'm imploring you, I'm encouraging you. If you ever find yourself in any of these situations, ensure that you have listened to the pointers they are so important and vital so all right guys so we're gonna be talking you know i know it's the close of your your conference so we want to definitely hit the ball out of the park by talking about being mindfully strong now what do i mean by that well my life wasn't always this positive it wasn't always this great um i doubt highly i always thought when this kind of um, alignment to purpose. Um, I remember from the age of 10 years old, I've, I've grown up in poverty. Let me tell you that first thing. Um, I grew up in an area that was poverty stricken. I remember at the age of 10 years old, my house burned down flat to the ground. I came home one day from school and that was the news that I got. I remember looking at the land space with no house and I was saying to myself, there's so many of us living in this one board house. How are we going to be able to cope? And it so happens that um, the 10 of us were able to find different areas to sleep and so on. We continued with life. Now, believe me, it was only months after that um, I came home just again. But this time, I got more devastating news. I was told that my father, who was my absolute world, my hero, my everything, um, he was actually shot and killed, so he died in the line of duty. Now, that, that totally wrecked me. Um, I, was, I was at a point where I felt as though I couldn't go on. And so from that very tender age, I started experiencing depression in a real way. Now, my mother, she moved on with her life. She ended up getting married, so happy for her. So we moved from that area. Um, and I remember one evening she wasn't feeling well. She was having an asthma attack. And so she was going to go to the hospital to get nebulized um, to just to get some air um, so that she would feel better. And it so happened that late in that night, I was called to, and told that um, my mother actually passed away from that asthma attack. And this was at the age of 16 years old. So I was, I was an orphan at age 16. I lost my father, then lost my mother. I had a grandmother who was living in the States um, and she came home to take care of my brother and I. And one year after my mother had passed away, that grandmother died as well. Now, let me tell you something. When my mother died, that day my mother died, I'm just backtracking a little. That day that my mother died, it was a Saturday night. And the Monday morning, I had eight exams to sit. 
um, for those who understand the Caribbean um, examination process, we had six exams to sit. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to even do them because the whole week, of course, was um, so stressful and having to call everybody and tell them what happened and then the crying. And of course, it would not have allowed any, any time to, for me to study. Um, but I did those exams anyway. I, I, did, I gave it my best shot. And I remember a month after when the exam results came out, my grade um, coordinator couldn't even wait until I came to pick up the exam. She called me and she said, Nas, I, I don't know how this happened, but you passed all eight exams. And I ended up getting um, ones and two. So that, that's like the highest and the second grade. So I failed none of them. And every single time I get to this point in my story, I always tell people, it doesn't matter what forum, it doesn't matter if it's a spiritual event or a corporate conference, it doesn't matter what it is. I oftentimes tell people that this is something that the grace of God had to take me through. I was under so much stress. I still don't know how I was able to cope to do those exams. So after my grandmother died at this point, I'm now into university doing my bachelor's degree. And again, I was so low because in my mind, I had lost everyone that meant something to me. And so if I could smoke, if I could drink, if I could go to parties, if I, whatever I could to just feel better, I would do it. Um, unfortunately, uh, I went through school just for the sake of going to school. Um, I knew I wanted a great job. And so that was pretty much my reason for doing my bachelor's degree. But it wasn't until afterwards that I had met upon a, a young man that I knew from school. Um, this gentleman and I, we ended up becoming friends. And today he's actually my husband. Now, this gentleman was so kind enough to take me back to church. Um, and literally, that relationship helped me to find my way. Now, why do I share this story? I share it at the start of every single presentation because I want you guys to understand that there is absolutely no way I can look at you and know what you've been through. And there's absolutely no way you can look at me and know what I've been through. And so there are many of us, we are educated, we look well, we dress well, we have nice things and we're doing excellent. But there are things that had happened to us when we were younger that unfortunately we are carrying them along life's journey and they have become baggages. Now, that story that I share with you, it doesn't even include the fact that I've been molested so many times that um, I grew up, like I said, I grew up in poverty. I know what it's like to experience gang violence. Um, just seeing the circumstances around you and wonder if you're ever going to get out of it. Um, and so it's important for us to be able to identify where we're coming from know where we're going and know what it is that we need to shed to get where we want to get. And so I had to give you that much um, information because you hear all those wonderful things in the introduction, but you never know that I had gone through all of that. And so to be mindfully strong, we're going to go through some points quickly. I know we're pressed for time. But we're going to go through some key points because what I want to do in this presentation is take you through. And by the way, I do not have a PowerPoint. We're just having a one-on-one -on -one discussion. It's, I mean, it's more than two of us, but we're having one-on-ones um, <laughs> at this point in time. And what we're doing is just talking about those things that may be affecting you that you don't even realize. And so the subtopic says to be able to develop. So it's developing the mental fortitude so that you're able to succeed. So let's talk. Now, the first thing I want you guys, if you want to write, that's completely fine. The first thing that is required to be mentally or to be mindfully um, strong is you need to have or need to do an assessment of where you are. Now, I'm so happy that Rochelle actually went into and even gave you guys a toolbox so that you're able to identify some of those things, those, those common emotions that you constantly go through. Now, what you may not realize is that 
sometimes the reason you experience these same emotions over and over again is because it's triggered by something that probably happened to you a long time ago. So for example, you have many of us who are going through life, we have low self-esteem. Why do we have low self-esteem? Well, you grew up in an environment where you were told, oh, you're not the prettiest one. Maybe you had a sister and they always refer to your sister as the pretty one. Or, you know, you, maybe when you were going to high school, that guy didn't choose you for prom. And so these are some of the things that you actually hold on to and you use them to form this negative concept or uh, perspective, but it's not true. So you have to be able to do an assessment of exactly where you are. What do I mean by that? Because I want to be very practical for you guys. I need you to just sit for a moment and think, what is that thing that, re that is really holding me back? For some of us, it's procrastination. For some of us, it's low self-esteem. For some of us, it's just not having that drive. For some of us, we worry about what people say. For some of us, we doubt. For some of us, we fear. For some of us, we self-sabotage. Now, you have to be able to identify these things for us to get where we want to get. So you need to do an assessment of where you are. Now, the second thing I want to mention to you is you need an assessment of your association. Now, ladies, let's just be honest. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you guys real because that's the only way I know how to do it. We have a lot of people around us who are not the best fit for our dreams or aspirations, where we want to go. We have the wrong people around us. Now, why is it important for me to mention association? Well, you know, Zig Ziglar had this quote. Um, he said that... If you tell me the network of your five closest friends, I can tell you yours. And my mother used to say to me, birds of a feather flock together, right? Or she would say something like, um, show me your company and I'll tell you who you are. These are all valid points. Why? Because unfortunately, unfortunately, if you have the right people around you, they happen to add on to your character or they take away from, right? If you are around someone long enough, before you even realize it, you start speaking like them. How many of you had, have, have had a girlfriend that you've been around her for a period of time and before long you have caught on to her slang? You know, I have a friend, she says, girl, she says it all the time. And before you know it, I'm doing that same girl thing. And I, <laughs> I didn't even know it, right? It's because our, 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 our association actually shapes our own habits and thought pattern. And so it's, it's extremely important that you know, you know and you choose the right people to be around, especially if you want to be mindfully strong. Now, why is it important, again, to have the right people around? Okay, I'm going to give you an example. So I enter the corporate arena a lot. I'm an HR consultant. And sometimes when I talk to different um, individuals, professionals, I would say to him, take me through your day, right? And it's, you would be surprised to know that sometimes you know, they have a negative attitude towards their job or towards their employer or something like that because of the people that they're actually close to in the organization. So they would go to work and they're happy. They're okay. You know, things are not the best, but they're in anyway. Um, and they get to work. And they're going to be um, making coffee. So they make coffee. They're in like their little break room. And this friend's com friend comes up to them and say, hey, I am so sick and tired of this job. They don't pay well. They're so disrespectful. I'm tired of being here. And, and I'm just, I really wish I, I was somewhere else. And that's the kind of conversation that you are having at the start of your day. Now, before long, you go back to your cubicle or your office, your manager calls you, you give, you give your manager an attitude, 
And this manager is like, what did I do? I just got here. <laughs> and I just asked for something. Why is she upset? And then you go home, you kick the cat, you slam the door, you, you yell at your husband, you yell at the kids. It started from that negative conversation in the morning when you should have been probably listening to something positive. Or association is so important. We oftentimes neglect it. And I'm saying to you, for you to be mindfully strong, this is one area that will definitely require some work. It will require some work and it's gonna take time, right? Because a lot of us don't even realize that we have the wrong people around, not that they're not loving and not that they don't love you and you don't love them, but their mindset happens to influence you in a way that they shouldn't or you shouldn't allow. All right, so the third thing I wanna mention when it comes to being mindfully strong is you have to make a daily assessment about what you are taking in. I have um, provided um, Diana with a, uh, what do I call it? It's like a worksheet for you. Um, I'd really love for you guys to, to take part in this um, as, uh, assignment. Why? Because it gives you a good picture of what your thought processes are like. How can you intercept those negative thought processes? And it's in your workbook, so you can check that one out. Um, you will see it. Um, so we're going to be talking about your daily intake. Now, when you say daily, daily intake, a lot of people will think that I mean like calories, the carbs, protein. No, that's definitely not it. It's, it, it's, it surpasses your nutritional stuff. Your daily intake is not just about food. Your daily intake also includes what are you listening to? What kind of books are you reading? What kind of music are you listening to? These things are all triggers. And, and unfortunately, in a time like this, everybody's so stressed out about the pandemic and the effect of it. But many of us are still watching the news all day. And we're looking at all these things happening worldwide and we're getting sad and we're getting depressed and we're getting anxious because it's a constant flow or inflow of negative information and what it does, it breaks down your whole, um, I, I'm going to put it in another way, your whole mental immune system. It breaks it down. You're not even able to deal with some simple matters because you're, you're worried or you're frustrated or, you know, you're wondering to yourself, what's going to happen to my family? But on the other hand, you do have individuals who are going through some very serious situations. So I'm gonna give you guys some pointers as we go along, but you wanna watch on a daily basis what it is that you are digesting. So like I said earlier, be careful of the conversations. You wanna be careful of what it is that you're listening to. You wanna be careful of what it is that you're reading. You have to be intentional. So you say that you want to work on a particular area of your life or a particular discipline. It's going to take work. My husband likes to say, nobody wins the Olympic by accident. Like that never happens. That will never happen um, because it takes constant, consistent and, and focused kind of work um, to be able to get to a certain point. And so what I'm saying to you is you have to watch what's going in. Now, whatever goes in is exactly what comes out. What do I mean by that? The very thing you hear is what you speak. If you are faith-based like myself, you will hear all the time that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. But it comes by hearing anything at all. All right. By raise of hands, because you can raise your hands on the Zoom platform. How many of you have been in a public transport, you've been in your own vehicle, you, you were just going about your own business, you were probably in a store and you heard a song. And sure enough, you went to bed that night and that song was playing in your head. Show of hands, anybody, somebody, somebody must be with me, right? So that song is playing in your head at the end of the day. Why? 
because your subconscious mind has held on to it. So it's not what you want to remember, you remember. There are things that are happening right now in your own life experiences and your subconscious mind is holding on to it. And so you want to be very careful what you feed it with. Now, there's a last point under that topic, that under this heading about your daily intake that I'm going to share with you. You have to make an assessment of how you speak to yourself. I'm going to repeat that. You have to take a daily assessment of how you speak to yourself. Now, while I have shared those things with you in terms of how to be mentally strong, all of that can be undone if you don't believe, if you talk down to yourself, if, if before you even take a chance to step out and achieve something, the first thing that comes to mind is that you can't do it. Guys, you will limit yourself in such a powerful way by how you narrate your own life. That voice in your head is stronger than even my voice speaking to you right now. That voice in your head is what you believe most of the times and a lot of times we tell ourselves lies. How many of you have gotten like a, a massive opportunity and you talked yourself out of it? How many of you wake up in the morning, you look yourself in the mirror and you absolutely hate yourself. You tell yourself, boy, I'm not beautiful. Boy, I'm, I'm not confident enough. Who am I to say that I, I can't, um, I, I, I should be going for that job. I'm not qualified. I, I'm not thin enough. And especially because we are now in that era of major social media influences, it's so easy to scroll across things and then say to yourself that I'm clearly not up to standard. Because society has now been feeding us with what is the norm or what is acceptable. And so we have to be very careful about how we speak to ourselves. And so I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you for all of next week. When you get up in the morning, you want to ensure that you are speaking to yourself in a positive way. As a matter of fact, I want you to start to intercept the thoughts. As soon as the thoughts come to say, I am not worthy, um, I am not this, I am not that, I want you to start speaking life. Speak well to yourself. And that will increase your self-confidence. And that is actually, if I were to give it some weight, I would say this is something that is like 50% of being mentally strong. You have to be strong for yourself. You have to speak to yourself. When reality wants to tell you one thing, you have to get up and say, I know, I know, I know COVID is out there and I know they're probably not um, hiring right now, but I'm sending my resume out anyway. <laughs> and I'm going to get called and somebody's going to call me because they need me. I am valuable. You have to start speaking to yourself in that way. If you're going to be going for a business opportunity, you say to yourself, yeah, I know there are many qualified persons out there, but somebody wants my expertise. Speak to yourself well. I'm going to share two stories with you, and then I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to wrap up. You also have to understand when it comes, up, comes to being mentally strong, I've shared my story. Um, I found that I've had to find ways um, I've had to find ways to cope with all the trauma, with all the tragedy, with, with everything that was going on, with all the disappointments. And I'm going to share them with you because it's important. Um, you are not exempted from having bad times. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian, if you're a Buddhist, it doesn't matter who you are. Every single human being will have a period of disappointment and hurt and pain. But 
I want you to understand that there is beauty in pain also. And so while you are learning to be mentally strong, I also want to drive home the point that every single thing that you go through in life, it is going to be used to bless someone else. It is going to be used to even push you into your purpose more forcefully. Now, I am a young lady who loves pearls. I don't know. I think I grew, I grew up with my grandmother and she loved pearls as well. Um, I think pearls are beautiful. I think pearls are chic. I think they, they're, they just represent something regal to me. Um, but the story of the pearl is actually what draws me to it um, even more. Now, we all know that pearls are formed in oysters. Now, if you look at the makeup of an oyster, an oyster has a hard shell. But if you open it on the inside, because people eat it, I don't know how they eat it, but it's a, yeah, that's their thing. Um, <laughs> but on the inside of the oyster, it's, it's soft, it, it's, it's moist, it's fleshy. And so what happens is when the oyster is in the, in the ocean or by the stream, wherever it is, and sand or any, anything that comes from the external that gets into it, um, it irritates it. It disturbs its whole makeup. And so the oyster is so disturbed that um, it has to create an adapting um, or a coping mechanism. Now, what happens when something exterior gets into the oyster? Well, it creates its own mineral called nacre. So every single time it starts to feel that pinch or that, you know, that rub, and it's, it irritates it, it coats it with that mineral. And it keeps coating it, and it keeps coating it, and it keeps coating it until voila, we get the beautiful pearls. Pearls are actually expensive. Um, I was looking on some the other day, and, and of course, they, 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 their prices change based on um, even um, where they're coming from, on their colors, so on, so forth. But they are a prime example that beauty can come from something that is an irritant. It irritates it. It disturbs the whole being of the oyster. But yet it is still able to create something that somebody can wear as a jewelry. So ladies and gentlemen, if we have gentlemen on, I'm imploring you. Some of us are going through some situations that we feel as though we cannot manage, we cannot take. But the truth is, if we are able to go through our day with gratitude, if we are able to focus on what's going right and what's not going right, if we are able to understand that if we go through this process, I can help Diana when Diana gets to that stage and she's going through that process, I can help her. Or if I want, I can be on a platform like this and I can teach 50 other women how to go through that process. I'm saying don't abort your process. Go through it and create something beautiful for the world to see so you can help everybody else. Now, my last point, guys, and I want to end with this. Um, I am an avid, avid believer in um, not just mental strength, but I also believe that you need to understand why you have to go through things. So it's good to be mentally strong, but you will be even stronger if you understand why you have to go through it, right? And there's a story that I like to share. I'm going to share it with you, and I'm actually going to close. I know we have a question and answer segment, so we can, we can, we can talk then. But there was this young lady who actually went away um, to university. She came home on break, and she was in her kitchen with her dad. And she was telling him, Dad, I absolutely hate university. I can't believe you and mom sent me all the way um, to the States. And, I'm, and, and you guys are here in Jamaica. All my friends are here in Jamaica. I cannot stand it. The lecturers are hard. There's particularly one called Diana Sharp. She marks me so hard. <laughs> um, um, she, she, um, I'm not able to cope with the new um, demands. I, I'm not used to being by myself. I have to make my own food. 
I have no friends. I, I just don't have the support that I want to come home. And the whole time she's there complaining and she's talking about all the things that are not going right. Her dad did nothing. He said nothing to her. He took out three small pots, three small pots, and he placed them on the stove with water in them. And in one pot, he placed an egg. In the second pot, he placed two potatoes. And in the third pot, he threw some coffee beans in it. Now she's there and she's saying, Dad, I'm talking to you. You're not listening. I don't feel as though I can mentally cope with everything that's going on because at this point, I'm going to school, but I, I feel so far away from you. He said nothing again. He allowed her to keep going. Until he finally said to her, I want you to tell me something. He placed three saucers before her. Well, two saucers and one cup. And he took out the egg and he said to her, tell me what do you see? And she says, it's an egg, of course. Why are you asking me that? She's annoyed at this point. He said, well, because I want to teach you something. He said, this egg represents how some people react to the issues that they face in life. And he said, this egg was fragile when it went in the pot, in the boiling water. So it went into that circumstance, fragile, but it came out hard. That's some people. They were loving, they were kind, they were, they were just beautiful souls until something came, some disappointment came, something just disturbed them completely. And so they, they became hard. They, they start saying, boy, I'm not giving people chances anymore. He says, don't be an egg. He moved on. He took out the potato, placed it in the saucer, and he said to her, tell me now, what do you see here? And she says, a potato. And she said, you know, it went in hard, but it's now soft. And he said, that's right. And this also represents another kind or another group of people. But he said, in this instance, they were so hard, they were abrasive, they were aggressive, you know, they're, 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 they're just very exact, they're not kind, this and that. But when they meet upon tragedy, when they meet upon, you know, hard circumstances, they just crack. They just crush. They, they crumble. They crumble under the pressure. They give up on life. They don't want to try anymore. Don't be that either. Right? And then the last point, he poured the coffee into the cup and he said to her, I want you to be like the coffee. The coffee beans went into the boiling water and the water did not change the coffee. The coffee bean changed the whole environment. So the water not only smelled good, it tasted good. He said, be coffee. Ladies, I'm imploring you, be coffee. Ensure that whatever situation you are placed in, you change it for the better. That's what mentally strong represents. It doesn't mean that you're always going to get a great result. It means that you're going to enhance the appearance, enhance what it looks like. Be coffee, ladies. Thank you so much for having me. We'll talk some more in the question and answer section. But being mentally strong includes changing your circumstances for the better. Thank you.